you've got to start the side hustle when there's no pressure because how many yes. um how, how many people started a youtube channel let's say four years ago talking about model planes and then became real estate experts as an example or in their mind yeah that's yeah. that's one of the things that's very interesting is is that they tried it it failed they tried something else it failed then they found their serum for boredom. Um, they didn't really even need to fully educate themselves on the matter. They just could have an opinion and that was good enough to, to propel the ship. So I think yeah. that as people do that, I think what's really key is when you've done the side hustle and not needed it and not had to have it to make the bills, guess what? You're probably gonna make something a whole lot better. How to quit your job the right way. How many of you have dreamed about, thought about, speculated on quitting your job, waking up one day and just going in and saying, I'm out. Probably most of us, we all have bad days. On this channel, we have talked to Anna Kelly, Dion, now Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, PTO for Life. All individuals since the creation of this channel have quit their job. So I want to talk about with Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, the most recent addition to this tribe. Mm -hmm. What is the right way to quit your job. Matt, what say you? I wouldn't necessarily say I did it the right way, um, but but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think it's different strokes for different folks, right? Like you knew you were done that day. You I, know. Yeah, it was a 15 second thought. Yep. Yeah, yeah. you're like, hey, so I'm out. Um, and that's talk not- Talk about, yeah. That's not necessarily wrong. However, you know, you had, at least on the, on the financial side, kind of had been in the position where you were like, hey, you know, we're not living off of, my income now anyway. So it's kind yeah. of good. Um, from my perspective, I think that it was really kind of twofold. It was, you can be ready up here and not ready here. Ah, uh, yep. You know? And for me, that's what it was. I was ready up here. I was ready to move on. I wasn't ready here because these are all people that I'd worked with for well over a decade. Um, I'd hired a lot of them. Um, I, you know, taught a lot of them, a lot of things. I brought them through the organization. I, you know, promoted uh, admins to directors, they'd been there that long. Um, you know, so, so recognizing that, you know, kind of the Schlumberger model, hire, hire somebody for the job that they can do plus two hire. Um, otherwise you don't hire. Um, and so it was really awesome. And so from that perspective, I was ready up here a lot faster than I was ready here. Um, yeah. and so in order to do that, you have to make sure to get things in line. Yeah. Well, I want to give a shout out to Ken McElroy. Uh, I did get the inspiration for this question, this thought from a, a tweet that he put out yesterday. At least that's when I saw it on five things you should be doing before you quit your job. Because again, I think I think a lot of people that follow you and I are full-time employees. Now they might be full-time entrepreneurs, right? They basically have a day commitment. They're spending yeah. their time doing something. Yeah. And a lot of them look at us as role models, for lack of a better word, on how to get there, right? How to get up that hill, which leads to the optionality of quitting. Um, you know what? So let's go through Ken's list, but I do have my own, but let's let's give respect to the, to the gentleman uh, who talked about this, uh, at least inspired the question. Number one, Ken McElroy says is, find a side hustle you enjoy and develop new skills. Yeah. This is all while being employed. This is this is the big thing for me is I would argue that most people, if not everyone, should not do what I did. Go to work one day thinking on the way in, you're going to work another five years, have a couple of horrible things happen, and you leave within five minutes. You're out. Mm -hmm. No planning, no prep, no thought, not an inkling an inkling that that morning would be my last day at work. So I would suggest that most people start executing stuff now. And if you're a baby boomer or a Gen X, I'm I'm big on whatever your passion's been the last 20 years, start playing there because it's easy and you love it and it won't feel like work. Yeah, I don't think that's wrong at all. I think that, um, you know, for me, you know, I got burned like you did in the market, you know, during the dot-com bomb. Um, and so when you lose, I lost basically everything. It was pretty damn close. Um, and so for me, it was like, yeah, I, I don't like games that feel like they're rigged. It just felt like it was rigged. I was like, you know what? If I lived in Manhattan, I was traveling in those circles. I was in boardrooms. 
you know, yeah, I have an advantage. And I'm not saying that those people shouldn't have that advantage. I'm just saying I w- that's an advantage, right? Yep. Clearly. Yep. 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 Um, or in Congress. Um, but you know, but I think the I think the thing for me was in looking at it, I just <laughs> Almost said, got me. Yeah. I said I think in, in looking at it, it for me it was I I need to do something that I think is, you know, more mainstream, more safe. Um, and so uh, my mom was a real estate agent. And so as being a single mom, nine, 10, 11 years old, before we were able to stay home alone, like we used to have to go in the car and do showings on Saturdays. Let me tell you how much fun that was as a yeah. kid, like yeah. being stuck in that middle seat doing, uh, I was much smaller, smaller than, but doing, being stuck in the middle seat, I'm between her and a client. Cause that's when, that's when they used to drive around. Remember that? Like with yeah. agents, they used to drive people yeah. around in their cars and to chauffeur them around for the day. Yep, yep. Now it's not like that. Now no one jumps in each other's cars. It's always, oh yeah, we'll follow you. Uh, that would have been much better, but yeah, I think at, you know, at, you know, looking at the looking at the situation, it was I really enjoyed. I knew a lot about housing. I enjoyed it. It was something where I'm a numbers guy, so numbers mm-hmm. come really easily to me. Um, and so it was one of those things where I looked at it and said, "This is this is something I really enjoy doing." And then it was just a matter of learning the fundamentals. You weren't around then, well, talking about it, right? Right. I yeah, wasn't yeah. around yeah. then. Like the internet was still a very new thing. Mm-hmm relatively speaking from a consumer perspective you know back in the early 2000s and mm-hmm. so yeah so it was it was challenging to learn but you know it was uh when i when i had gone through your book i was like yeah i mean that's that's it right that's yeah. what that's what business guys do right yeah when i think about ken mcelroy's point right find a side also you enjoy and develop new skills i think about gen x and baby boomers our our generations and and think about you know, this this crazy device wasn't around when we were at our formidable, formidable years, right? We were outside playing. We didn't have phones and screens in front of us all the time. So I would, again, I go back to just thinking about Gen X and baby boomers just having something that they've been doing for 20 years or it's their life stories or whatever. Uh, I was talking to Sean Cannell the other day and he's like, he's like, Zuber, there are too many 25-year-old life coaches. Yeah, dude. I'm like- yeah, joke. he's he's not wrong. He's he's very rarely wrong. But no. uh, shout out Sean Cannell, Think Media. The idea that I took from that whip is there's not enough Gen X and baby boomers on YouTube or other social media platforms sharing their passions and interests or their life stories. Right. Yeah. Dion, Dion, for example, could do a whole new channel on being a single dad, raising Absolutely. three kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, whatever, whatever, there is a passion, a story out there. And again, the whole idea is if you can build on it when there's no pressure, Yeah. when you are employed, you are paying your bills where it is purely extra. Yeah. And if you do that for a couple of years, you're going to be so far ahead of the game that when you do quit, you will roll right into something. That's where I messed up. Right. Yeah. but I mean, you did sort of have, like you had it though. Like uh, I was fine financially, but I didn't have that thing. Yeah. Right. So I was lucky that I had the financial wherewithal where I could do 1200 videos and not be monetized, where I could write a book and self-publish, where I could pay editors to do, you know, two different editors, five grand each to edit. I was lucky enough where money wasn't the problem, but I needed a mission. I needed a thing. Yeah. Um, and it took me a, over a year to kind of feel like I found it. Um which is the brand one rental at a time. But uh, I just I just think about, wow, if I was just building it casually, one video a week, like Saturday morning, just for five years, where where we could have been. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm on that, you know? And so it's, for me, it was, you know, I retired to being a full-time dad. I retired to, you know, I've done drop-offs and pickups and blah, 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 you know, um, meeting with the city during the day, like not having to beg for a 7.30 a.m. meeting, right? right. Yeah. So I could get to work. Um, so self-managing, you know, uh, so I amazingly, all of my projects are moving at lightning speed now. Um, I find it shocking. You know, they're like, dude, what, like you need to give us a second. I was like, sorry, did you just ask me, tell me you need more time? Uh, no. that's, and I'm not asking for another another week. Um, you know, and so, yeah, everything's moving a whole lot faster. In fact, I work, I, I walk the, I walk with the town today on a project. So yeah, retiring to something, you know, that's something Dion always said, right. Retiring to something, not from something. So, you know, Dion always said that, you know, I guess it just matters. It doesn't even matter what you're retiring to clearly based on what yeah. he's retired to. 
right. um, you know, naps and video games. Uh, yeah. But that's it. But that's, but that's his thing you get to do. That's what you get to do. And so for me, it's, it's self-management for now. It's, but I've got young kids, six, four, two, and five months. Yeah. So you've seen there are a I lot. Have. Yeah, yeah there are a lot. I mean, there's pretty well behaved, but there's still four of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're playing zone defense, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exa- I always tell people, I was like, when you're man to man, no problem. Once you go zone, you're done. You are exactly. done. They will find the holes in the defense. Yeah. You are done. They absolutely find the holes in the defense. So, yeah. So, I think you're, I think you're exactly right. Retire to something, but you've got to start the side hustle when there's no pressure because how many, yes. um, how, how many people started a YouTube channel? let's say four years ago, talking about model planes and then became real estate experts as an example, or in their mind. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things that's very interesting is, is that they tried it. It failed. They tried something else. It failed. Then they found their serum for boredom. Um, Mm -hmm. They didn't really even need to fully educate themselves in the matter. They just could have an opinion and that was good enough to to propel the ship. So I think that as people do that, I think what's really key is, when you've done the side hustle pr- and not needed it and not had to have it to make the bills, guess what? You're probably going to make something a whole lot better. Yeah. It's building it slow, building. The beauty about what I hope people take from this is if you build it slowly in the right way where there's not money pressures, yeah. I'm convinced that most of the crash bros that we pick on all the time, and frankly, probably pick on us as well. So it's clearly a two-way street. Oh, yeah, yeah, two it's way. it's sure. fine. Two-way street. Yep. Most of them have tapped into that nerve because they need the money. I don't think there's a crash bro out there that truly believes at this point what they're saying. I've gone to their channels, look back at the stuff they've been saying for four years and four years been wrong. It's all the same crap for all the same reasons. Mm -hmm. However, when you look at their numbers, they're making bank. Folks, crash bros don't believe what they're saying, in my opinion. But they could be making upwards of $80,000 a month. That is a hard drug to get off of, right? They can't get off that. They can't suddenly say housing's going to be flat because nobody will watch. Their their viewership will turn on them and it will be a horrible existence. But damn it, why should they change? The algorithm is feeding them daily views. They're making bank. They don't have to be right. It's an opinion. Um. So again, I've always told people, if you want to grow fast, be negative. If, if you want to grow and have impact, grow slowly. And that's okay. Look at the top five channels from 10 years ago. I don't have no idea who they were. Are they they don't exi- Most of them don't exist anymore. Mm. You know, and it's because they found us, they found something for a pocket in time that worked really well. And then it didn't, or they mm. said something to, uh, to offend the horde, you yeah. know? And that's the issue, right? Is that the best part of doing YouTube for me is that I don't need the money. Yeah. I do it to share my experiences. So hopefully some other people sh- save money or mm-hmm. get encouraged that, yeah, I did it too. It's not, it's not rocket science. Is it hard work? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it Does is. it take time? Yeah. Yep. Possible. Yeah. Yep. Do you have to learn a lot? Does the first five years suck? I've heard that somewhere. Yeah. Um, some guy said but- that. But that's the thing, right? Is that that's the opportunity that it is for people to really say, hey, I really love this. I wonder if I can monetize it. Hey, I really love X. I really wonder if I can monetize it, you know, and have there be an alternative. You know, there's some, you know, uh, Scotty Kilmer. I'm not sure if you know who he is. He's a he's a car guy. Okay. Basically a retired mechanic. Oh, nice. Okay. And he's awesome. He is a total wing nut in in the awesomest way. And he talks about, yeah, this car sucks and here's the reasons why. And this car is pretty good because it's never in the shop, right? Mm. So he's out there giving amazing information. He's pretty entertaining. And he does, you know, 10, 15, 20 minute videos on specific vehicles, but he's a mechanic. And so, you know, but he's got like, I want to say he's got hundreds of thousands of done a million subs. Right. Good for him. Yeah. And he's and talking so, about what he knows and loves. Exactly. And it doesn't, you know, he did it. The beauty of this, if you do it right, this is what I want full-time employees. And again, we're only on point one of Ken McElroy's list is if you build it while you're employed, while there is no stress, no buildup of bills, no reason you have to go naked. And a lot of these crash bros are failed something else and they needed to pay their bills somehow, some way. And they figured if they create fear porn, they'd get paid. And they're right. Yeah. Um, I just happen not to want to live there, uh, live in that just darkness. 
Um, but it works. If you're comfortable doing it and you failed at other stuff, by all means, you know, you do you. Um, let's go on to number two. This yeah. one really, this one a lot of people get wrong. Again, shout out Ken McElroy. It's his list. We're just riffing off. Number two, prioritize financial stability before quitting. Oh, this yeah. is obviously something you and I got right. And yeah, frankly, yeah. we're focused on and probably got really, really right. Right. When you look at the the needs versus what's coming in. Mm -hmm. But there's a big, big push for entrepreneurs. Quit your job, burn the boats, be committed, rack up debt. You work harder. And I hate all kinds of that. I hate everything about that. 20 years ago, right? You were Silicon Valley guys. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Was there a developer in Silicon Valley that wasn't working 100 hours a week? No. Were they were they talking about work-life balance, Mike? No. No. Oh, no, not at all. You would see them emerge, bloodshot <laughs> eyes. Oh yeah. Tweaking on caffeine. They that Red Bull was invented for them mm -hmm. and Monster Energy and absolutely tweaking out and some other illegal substances. Uh but uh, we saw it, right? And we lived it. You see that with the startup and that startup mentality. It is I mean Mike, it's like 110 hour work weeks. It is like 120 hour pushes. You know, it is this crazy, you know, committed from the bottom, but it's because they own the company. They got to let this, they got to make this idea work. Mm -hmm. And then people wonder why you only have like three or four of those in your life that you can even do, whether they were successful well, or fail. Two, two or three. three or four of those. Yeah. Most, most people can only do one. The, yeah. the true psychopaths can do a couple it's it's oh, it's a rough life i've, I've been in the valley hard. forever it's rough. yeah it's really hard but if you but again if you kind of look at it and you say you know for their perspective that's why they're living with four other people in a house in you know the bay area and they're paying mm -hmm. 800 bucks in rent or 900 bucks or a thousand bucks in rent it's their part and yep. they're just like living off the base of the base you know trying to do mm -hmm. anything that they can to get ahead um, you know, I think that, yeah, I think McElroy, again, I think he has it right because for me, for you and for me, um, you know, you had your money, right. So you could just essentially go, yep, yeah, we're ready. And yeah. then for me, it was the head heart thing. And then it was, I think we've got our money, right. But then I was like, you know what, if I have to throw everything at this, let's spend last year was an, a uh, spend a palooza spent over six figures every single month, try on top of what we were on top of normal spend to get projects done. And right. so that way I could slide into this year and just go, you know what? Yeah. Now, now it can be okay. Now, now it's all right to make this move. Yeah. Yeah. When I think about this again, I go back to doing it the right way. And what want for the audience, when you quit your job, that money's not the thing. I also hope for you that you have a mission or you have a thing. And I just want you to realize that your 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 mission, your thing, all you need is, you know, a couple of thousand folks in your tribe. And you will you'll have so much fun. If you're a car guy, you're a model airplane or whatever it is that you get you which lights you on fire, there there is a way that you can still feel like you're contributing. Cause that was the big deal for me. Right. If once the money was right, I still got depressed. And I feel like a loser saying that, but it's no less true. Because I didn't have a mission. I didn't have a reason to wake up. Purpose. And that sucks. Purpose. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So again, make sure you have that thing. And again, I cannot imagine anything better than building it now for years when you can build it slowly on purpose without pressure. And then let's just go back to the thing that drives me crazy is, is all of these entrepreneurs that hear Cody Sanchez or Gary V or you know, Alex or Mosey or any of the others. And what they hear is quit your job, buy a business, go big. Now, I don't think any of those three are saying that. I don't, I don't think Gary, Cody, or, or Alex say that, but it doesn't matter. That's what the audience hears. And that's a recipe for disaster. Can right? Be. Yeah. For most people, it will be. Right. You have no business sense. You've never had a business and you're just going to go buy something or start something from scratch and hope it works out. That's, it takes work. It takes luck. It takes execution. Most people aren't entrepreneurs in, in my opinion. There are far more people that say they're entrepreneurs than are actually entrepreneurs. Yeah. They I think just... we're going to find out in the next recession, as Gary V says, there's going to be a lot of people on their LinkedIn profile 
that are uh, entrepreneurs and uh, suddenly they'll be employees. They're going to have to be. And we see it. We see why, you know, it's like, well, I don't like taking direction. Who does? I, I thrive off of being bossed around. <laughs> <laughs> no one said no one ever. And so I think that that's really critical. You know, when you're looking at being an entrepreneur, the biggest misconception is that you're in charge. Yeah. Everybody owns you. Your tenants, if it's real estate, your tenants own you. The towns owe you. The inspectors own you. Everybody owns you. Now, at the end of the day, you can decide whether or not to move forward with a project or you can decide what, you know, how you're going to handle the situation, which if you are indecisive, you're dead. Mm -hmm. If you are afraid of, of, of offending people, dead. You, you have to be thick skinned because you have to do, unless you are okay with somebody just basically giving you the bird and saying, I'm not paying your rent. Right. So it's, it's, you know, it's uh it's one of those things that people, there's a, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are really thin skinned right now. And it's yeah. going to, and you saw what? it, right? There was oh, yeah. never so much money in the last three years in, in that market of dumb ideas. It was almost like dot-com bomb, right? Yeah. Dumb ideas, tons of money, tons of valuations. In my space, I saw a company with a $4 billion valuation from nothing in three years. They went from zero to a $4 billion valuation. You know where they are now? In pieces in multiple companies because they had to break it up and sell it off. Well, let's just go to our, what we talk about on a lot of this channel, real estate. Uh, I would argue that iBuyers were a symptom of craziness, Absolutely. right? They raised a lot of money by selling stock when risk was zero. I mean, what did Zillow lose? Like half a billion dollars? Half a billion. Yeah, only a half a billion. Only half yeah. a billion. They yeah. lit a half a billion dollars on fire. So um, there's a lot of, you know, when, when risk is zero, you know what? I just thought about this. I actually think the last three years, when I look at the risk profile of the dot com era, was worse. The last three years, Agre because oh, it was more, money. it was more, more diverse, money. and way yeah, more it was, free money. Yeah, it was more diverse, right? In the dot com era, it was very much, hey, we're going to go take every tech company, throw a dot com on it. It's dot com, web van, you know, all these things. And mm -hmm. sure, a lot of money got lit on fire, but in the grand economy, it was you know this much. Yeah. The last three years was you know. We had all these SPACs, you had uh, high buyers, you had entrepreneurs, you know, social media, blah, blah. It's just money was, money was everywhere. Everywhere. And yeah. That's interesting to think about. I had not thought about that. Yeah. It was everywhere. And so everybody could do. And the other thing too was, if you knew you were rent was being paid for, mm -hmm. uh, some of them thought in perpetuity, right? <laughs> yeah. I had one of those. Right? Yeah. But yeah. we had, they thought it was being paid for in perpetuity. So it was like, okay, my rent's covered. My gas is covered. My food is covered. And if you're wondering what I mean, gas assistance, mm -hmm. food stamps, mm -hmm. there are all things where people literally were just, because all of these programs were flush with cash. Yeah. The government approved tens of billions of dollars and they put it into these programs. Yeah. They threw it. The, the economy was flush. So how it fast the, can we get rid of it? It was the UBI test. Yeah, it was. Didn't, Didn't go, go very well. 9.1% inflation is a result. Absolutely. Yeah. But you look at it and you people that come away from it now, we're down to our last tenant that we got that way. And mm. it's not looking good for her. Um, she's way behind. And now she's literally, she's like, I don't know what you want me to do. I've reached out to every every person, every group I know, and no one has any money to give me. <gasps> mm. No, maybe you should have thought of that and go make some yourself. But yeah. she got hooked on that free money. Yeah, there were there were a lot of people. I mean, it, it, some people hopefully go to jail. I mean, there were a lot of you know, um, not only stimulus, but yeah, PPP. That's where I was going. PPP yeah. fraud. Uh, yeah. You know, the government is being proactive and attacking some of that. People buying Lambos and you know all these crazy cars. Um, just money was everywhere. And when what I've learned with this, you know, this you're right. It was a UBI test. I yeah. absolutely agree with that. Yeah. And. When you give money to folks that did that they didn't earn it, they don't treat it the same. It's it's free. Yeah. And anytime something is free, bad stuff happens. So um yeah, pretty interesting. And the needs and wants thing, you've hit the nail on the head with that for, for years. Like that's how you and Olivia did it. We're oh, amazing yeah. at doing it. 
But I, you know, I'm seeing the list of the things that it's being justified of why the rent couldn't be paid. You know, my kids have traveled across, you know, we needed a second vehicle. What? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, I'm yeah. sorry. No, dude, Olivia and I have one vehicle now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, yeah. So I agree it, that That's that crazy. was the, that was a broken part for sure. All right. Let's go back to Ken McElroy. Cause he's got three more. This will be number three. Scale a business and diversify your income streams. This one hits me because it's to me, it's the after, right? I think, I think personally, too many people go for uh, diversification too early. I agree. Uh, I've been lucky enough over the last five years to hobnob with people worth somewhere between 10 and 100 million bucks. I haven't met a billionaire yet, maybe someday. Uh, but everyone I've ever talked to when we get be. Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm working on it. Someday. I haven't met a billionaire yet. At least not that I know of. Um, no. Actually, I met Meg Whitman, but that's a different story. Uh, so where I was going with this is nobody I've met that's worth 10 to 100 million bucks did it with diversification. They all did it in one silo. It might have been stocks, right? So when I say diversification, I'm saying like stocks or business, all of this. Like for you and I, it was real estate. And then at some point when you're good, you diversify. Yes. So that, that's that's how I read that. But what do you think? Scale a business and diversify your income streams. Number three from Ken McElroy. Scale a business, yes. Diversify, sort of. It depends on how you diversify. What that means is if you are a, if you're big into sports cards and that's how you made your millions was in sports cards. And now you want to go talk about flowers. Hmm. Probably not the best idea. No flowers, flowers in all likelihood are going to remain because now you're doing double work. Yeah. What you want to do in another revenue stream is you want it to be aligned with your core business and then have that add value to your core business. That's what's best. You know, you and I didn't come out with courses on flowers. We came out with courses on real estate. So it's like, okay, re real estate revenue, then course revenue and channel revenue and this and that and the other. And you see all these things start to line up and you say, okay, that's diversification. However, they are dependent on each other, but then you can see which one of those ones you fall in love with. And you're just like, this one's now the new passion. And it's like, then you have the core business supporting that but you have still have that pin action where you can then grow these other parts of the business, you know? And I yeah. think that that's the mistake that people make is they want to go from, you know, even us as real estate investors, we're diversified. You know, I've got section eight retirees, the shipyard, corporate tenants, market tenants, section eight tenants. And it's like, we have six different tenant streams that are tenant pools that we pull from. So that business is diversified and it's, it's, become much more like uh like an exchange or or like a um what's the word i'm looking for not exchange um uh like the s p uh an right. index index it's become index. much more like an index um and, and even though it's in this sector yeah. right so i think that that's the thing i think yes i agree with that but grow first and then if you're doing something where you're adding another revenue stream it's got to be something to do with that core revenue stream yeah when i think about again what we've done on uh uh, Dion, right? All folks that have already kind of gotten to that have quit their job, frankly, and quit their job during the, you know, during the time we've been talking is a lot of them scaled their business and got there. And then they did other things as offshoots. Yes. Right. And again, I'm telling folks, baby boomers, Gen Xers to go create your passion, your hobby, your thing, focus, do one thing. And then over time that will grow and then it will give you opportunities. For example, Again, I've already admitted that I quit in a moment's notice, had no plan. I've already admitted that I did 1,200 videos before I was monetized on YouTube. How many of you do 12 videos and complain? I did 1,200. But since I've done that, offshoots of that is I wrote two different books. Mm -hmm. um, I've done three or four different courses. We've done uh, referrals or affiliates. We've done live events. We've done virtual events, right? All of these things. And oh, by the way, I've raised private money and I found deal flow. All of these things are built around that first thing of 1200 videos. 
So that's why I want people to, to get started. And again, you don't find your voice right away. So, so right. grow that thing for years and then there will be opportunities to, to pivot in, in, in profit, frankly. Absolutely. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but a jack of all trades is better than a master of one. Ooh, look at you dropping wisdom. All right. Number four, focus on building a real business for long-term financial freedom. I would think that that's the goal of any business, frankly speaking. Right. Um, well, I think where he's going for is if you go back to number one is a side hustle, right? So mm -hmm. don't, ch what I think he's saying there is don't chase fads. Don't be, um, you know, don't be fake. Don't just try something because it's hot for a minute. Agreed. Um, you know, th that's where I think he's going is, is you do you and be authentic and it will come, right? Build a real business on something you really care about. I think that's where he's going with that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, passion first, right? Passion first, because if you're just in something for the sake of being in something, like you might hate real estate investing. You yeah. might hate being a landlord. You might hate working with PMs. You might hate the fact that the market does this or tenants do that or whatever. And you get into it for a year or two. That's why Mike and I would tell you, don't go out and buy five properties. Buy one. One, just one. Just one. Tenant. Stop. Just, just wait. One. Just yep. figure it out. Let it, there's a reason the banks aren't idiots. They let you season the property for six months to a year. Right. They want to see, okay, is this person going to be able to handle this? Or do they know what they're in for? And mm -hmm. the first five years suck. And then the next five get a whole lot better. And then the next five, it just gets downright jubilant. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yep. But yeah, I think, I think that that's right. I think that, you know, the goal always is in any business. Now I'm not a big goal setter. So when I set out for the house thing, it wasn't even to, necessarily retire early. It was just, I was like, I just wanted something else to do and somewhere else to put my money and something I could enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more again, folks. If you're going to do what we're talking about, quit your job the right way. Again, you start with the side hustle, build from there. There's, there's just, you'll be so much more happy with, and no, no stress, right? Starting a real business, just quitting your job. As we said earlier, I can't imagine the stress level of doing that. All right, let's close it out with number five from Kim McElroy, uh, again on Twitter or X. Network, seek opportunities, and learn from others. Yes, yes. Um, network, yep. I remember sending you an email saying, hey, love your show. You don't have anybody from the East Coast on. I want to participate. Pretty please? Pretty, and, you yeah. were, and you were great. You were like, we'll, we'll have a conversation. And then you were like, yeah, let's just do this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, sure, sounds good. Weekly, baby. Weekly. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool thing was, is like, I learned what's going on in the Fresno market. I learned what's going on in the California market. I learned what's going on. But now we're a sum of all the other investors that we help. Oh, yeah. Right. So what's gotten ridiculous is I never would have in a billion years ever wanted to talk about Gary, Indiana. I didn't know Gary, Indiana even existed. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> didn't know it existed in all honesty. And then so, but, you know, talk to Mike about it probably once a week. Yeah. You know, about whatever he's doing in one of his projects. And so, and that's cool. And so it's been awesome from that perspective because it's, you know, uh, all over the country, you know, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, Austin, Houston, Dallas, like all these different Detroit, Chicago, I mean, all these places and then stuff that's like suburb. So yes, absolutely network. Um, I think that the thing that most newbies get wrong is they don't understand the the importance and the value of that piece. That's yeah. what the newbies get wrong the most. They're they feel much more comfortable asking the question in a chat group or a chat room. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Meet real that's meet important. in real life. Yeah. Stop. You need listen, because that's what everybody else is doing, be different. Be different. Everybody else is posting stuff in chat rooms. And it's, that's fine, but don't let that be your only thing because no one knows the nuances of your market. No one knows if there's 400 brand new units hitting and no one can take the time to do the research every single time they get asked a question. Yeah. One of the things that I've come to realize is there's, you have to find people that you know, like, and trust mm -hmm. and then do what they say, right? Mostly, one of the yeah. things I got wrong early in the in my career is I tried to do everything by myself because I told myself I didn't have time, right? I was on different continents and traveling and all this stuff. But even back then, I could have done a better job of networking. And I think that would have allowed me to grow even faster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other thing about networking, when, you, when you're in the right community, 
The community should have people above you and at your level and below you. That's what we are building together with one rental at a time. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you're a lumberjack lander. Oh shit, I'm a landlord. Is we're building people with different experiences, and we're all helping each other. We all get better, right? Iron sharpens iron, and that was really apparent to me at the Vegas event. Yes, just the, just the sh the networking people, just really kind of being there for each other. It was that was that was a big aha moment. For me, I I love when people tell me that they've taken all three courses. Yeah, I love it because buy a box, Mike. Binder, Dion, Matt, self management of you know and grow you know pr growth on your own right, mm -hmm. um and and being in those jobs and do you want to get competent and understand? I got taken for a number of rides with, by contractors because I couldn't speak the language. I didn't know what I was looking at, and that's that was my that's my passion now is making sure people don't get taken for a ride by contractors. Yeah. You know, it, it can happen. There's plenty of there, there's not enough old REI guys, Frank Contreras's. There's not enough of those. There's right. far too many fly-by-nights and mm -hmm. ones that are really in it for their four and no more. And that's a major gap in most people's games. And so you can do that through a PM, but you've seen it. You went through it. Five or six really bad PMs that were just billing uh -huh. for stuff they weren't even doing. Yeah, lie, cheat, and steal. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. So again, folks, what this conversation was is how to quit your job the right way. If you've ever dreamed, thought about it, it is possible. Uh, I, I suggest it takes time, planning, preparation. I suggest, as Dion says, rolling into something versus running from something. Uh, Matt, if somebody wanted to reach out, follow you, check out your course, where should they look you up? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram, still doing uh, 1130 AM every Sundays for 90 minutes. We just spend wow. time answering people's questions um, and just live on the go and then uh we're doing boot camps right now on saturday nights and sunday afternoons that are going awesome so much fun we got about 30 people in those boot camps so that's been a blast nice. um and uh yeah instagram there's gonna be a lot more pictures in the next couple of weeks coming up on instagram because i think the police station project if we go well this afternoon we should be able to write a nice big fat check for a permit i look forward <laughs> to it thanks brother thanks mike